Okay, I'm very excited to have on the Goldstein on Gelt show, Jane Barrett, who is the founder and CEO of Goldbean. Jane, I'm sorry you didn't name it Goldstein, because then it would have been perfect for the Goldstein on Gelt show. (laughs) But as we get started, tell people what this is, and then let's dive in. Well, thanks so much, Doug. It's great to be here. Goldbean is an investing for beginners platform. We help people get started with their first portfolio. We believe in invest in what you know and learn as you go. So we are very much a platform to just help people get started. That's the that's the fundamental of what we do. We have a site, hellogoldbean.com. Um, at the moment, it's US only, but we also license out our content and license our software to financial institutions to help them solve the same problem. So let's look at what the real problem is that a lot of beginner investors have. Do you have questions that people send in or do you know what the, the biggest problems are that people are facing who are just starting? Yeah, I mean, it all comes down to, you know, it's much more around human psychology than it is about basic education. So people feel nervous, they feel like it's a big risk, they're inexperienced and they don't want to admit they're inexperienced. And often it just comes down to, I don't know what the words mean. You, know, you can say it's four ninety five a trade all day long. If you don't know what it, that means, it's an immediate, you know, off put. I don't want to do this. It sounds hard. So unless you are already confident and already well versed in how investing works, or you have an advisor of your own, which most people don't have the assets to do, you know, you kind of get stuck in this place of, well, I'm never going to start. And so we've built our platform around solving those issues with education and content and tools. So let's, let's look at what someone should do when he starts. You know, one of the things that I see in my day job as a financial advisor, the trigger that gets people involved in investing, and it's, sometimes it's good news or bad news, but they get an inheritance. And all of a sudden, they're, they get a huge amount of money, you know, much more than they've ever had and probably much more than they'll ever get again. And they need to think of the first thing to do. What is, <laughs> what is the first step someone should take when he or she gets a, a, an inheritance? See, the funny thing is that we're trying to address people 10, 20 years before that day because often what happens when they get an inheritance is they go to the car dealership or pay off credit cards or go shopping, right? That's the last thing you should do. Um, I think the the first thing to do is really look at, you know, the hierarchy of where you are right now. You know, do you have high interest debt? You know, are you living above your means? Like what can you do in terms of getting yourself to even kill and then look at how to put the money to work. And I think that is a big mistake as well. I've just got a big chunk of money. I'm going to roll it all into something, whether it's high risk or, or low risk and low return. But the strategy really needs to look across the whole base of someone's financial life rather than just, oh, yeah, yeah I've got a pile of money. And like I said, you know, we would rather people know what an advisor does and the questions to ask and have a little bit of experience of putting money to work to know that you know a good return is 5% a year, and that's okay. Because again, most people don't know that. You mentioned getting rid of debt, in other words, or getting on an even keel, which sounds to me like getting rid of debt. Is that something that you think people should really focus on first before they get involved in investing? Well, it's funny. That was our biggest aha when we started taking on clients, was it actually didn't really matter how much debt someone had and what the profile of that debt was. It was their attitude towards the debt. Like we would have clients with, you know, low federal student loans or a low rate mortgage and they had this inherent fear that I have to pay down my debt before I can put my money to work. And if you're 30 years old, you've just missed, you know, a massive amount of compounding because of that attitude. And so and then we'd have other clients who had, you know, high interest rate credit card and yet they're like, you know, I need to speculate because I gotta grow the money I have because I gotta pay off my credit card debt. It's like wow, so I think just education around debt and really being clear around the line in the sand of this is high interest, this is low interest, this is okay, and this is what you need to tackle. Like that's the even keelness. It's not like you have to pay it down. Like a a healthy financial life can include debt, but it just often comes back to someone's attitude towards it. Mm -hmm. We're talking with Jane Barrett, who is the head of a company called Goldbean. It's an online platform that helps people to start their investment journey. And so I'm happy to be talking to Jane about some of the important basics. I'll tell you something funny that you just said, which sadly happens not only to young people, but to old people, is they're retired. And again, this is the kind of call that I get on a, I wouldn't say a daily basis, but an occasional basis, where someone calls in and he says, you know, Doug, uh, interest rates are so low, I need to make more money on my investing. You know, I'm thinking of trading stocks. And you know, this guy's 70. And <laughs> this is all the money he has. And it's, uh, I got to kind of, you know, bring him down from the ladder to make sure that he doesn't blow all of his money. Someone who's starting to invest, what would you say is the best way to get going? Is it trading a stock or a fund or, or just putting money in the bank? 
Well, again, I think it comes down to individuals' risk profiles. If you try and force someone into a level of risk that even though, you know, mathematically they're well suited for, but psychologically they're not, you know, you can ruin their investment journey for the rest of their life. So we spend a lot of time really letting people guide the way. So our approach is, I mean, it, it leans heavily on 20 years experience I've had working with brands and in the digital marketing world. Our experience is if you say low cost index fund, mutual fund, ETF to beginners, they glaze over and say thanks and mumble and walk away. <laughs> if you say, hey, you spend a lot of money at Amazon, they're doing great. You know, how about including those in a portfolio? So our investment approach is very different to most algorithm driven advisors in that we will put together portfolios of, I mean, they're still grounded in low cost ETFs, but we'll include individual equities just for people to make that conceptual leap. And it may only be a couple of stocks, a couple of hundred dollars, mm -hmm. but if you are getting started, you need resonance and you need to care. And it's really hard to care about a low cost index fund. And I think that's yeah. been part of the, it's been part of the issue. Like people can say, you know, hand on heart, the best thing to do is put it into a Vanguard ETF and walk away. And like, yes, maybe it is. But like that sort of approach sounds like A, boring. And B, <laughs> it just doesn't, it doesn't resonate. Right, it doesn't mean anything it doesn't to a lot of anything. people. I hear what you're saying. You've got to remember like half a trillion dollars is spent around the world getting brands into your head and getting money out of your pocket. Like leverage that knowledge. And that is just a, a conceptual leap that most financial services people won't make. But the humans of the world certainly do. Show me my spend. Show me where I shop. Oh, my God, look where my mm -hmm. money goes to all these companies, shareholders that aren't me. Right. I remember that uh, when I started in the business 25 years ago as an investment advisor, one of the things that uh, some guy in the office said, he said, I always look for the local utility company where mm -hmm. my client lives and I have him buy shares of that yep. so that he gets the dividend and the dividend he gets from that pays his utility bill. So pays he says, bill. wait a second, oh, this is a, yeah. he really oh. sees it. And the funny thing is what you said also is uh, as an investment advisor, I do really deal mostly in broadly diversified portfolios with funds and ETFs and managed accounts. But people say, well, Doug, how do you manage your money? And I say, you know, most of my money is in these sort of programs. Mm -hmm. But it's true, I do own a few individual stocks because I have to talk to my kids about something around the dining room table. It's much more interesting to talk about, you know, uh, some company that they're uh, buying products from rather than, you know, diversification and asset allocation, which is just so hard to make sound sexy. Well, and it's also the entire wealth management industry is built on, believe it or not, wealthy people. Right? That's what all of those strategies are for, <laughs> of people with a big pile of money. If you've got $5,000 and someone starts lecturing you about diversifying your portfolio and managing your risk and managing the fees, it's like, oh, my God, I'm just going to take myself to Hawaii. Done. <laughs> it's, right? Yeah, it's much That's better your way to alternative. Spend money. <laughs> right. Yeah, you have to find a balance. And the fact is, it's also true that people have to find a balance between investing and spending and not just, you know, a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the, the talking heads just talk about you got to put squirrel away all the money because mm -hmm. otherwise you're not going to benefit from compound interest, which I, of course, agree that the importance of being a long term investor, but you do have to find a balance. You know, Jane, I know that balance is something that you are very good at and I'd like to learn more, but we are out of time. But tell me in the last few seconds, how can people learn more about what you're doing and follow you? So hellogoldbean.com is the site, uh, Hello Goldbean on Twitter and Facebook. I have an enormous amount of content on lynda.com, which is LinkedIn's learning channel, which is everything from personal finance to investing to weekly tips. So there's plenty that, uh, that people can find out about Goldbean. Um, and if you're in the US, it's uh, very simple to sign up. Hello, goldbean.com. It's $50 a year for education and investment advice. Okay, we will put a link to that at the show notes of today's show at goldsteinongelt.com. Jane Barrett, thanks so much for your time. Thanks so much, Doug. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt show with money maven, Doug Goldstein. Check out all of Doug's money ideas at goldsteinongelt.com. Doug specializes in helping people who live outside the United States handle their U.S. investment accounts. If you have a question that you would like answered on the air or off, contact Doug at his website or send him an email to doug at profile-financial.com. Thank you.